was A Fool in Love by Hellings. Wow, what a sound. I hear a little Aerosmith. I hear a little Alice Cooper even, and even Mellencamp in those tunes. And, and Brett Hellings is uh, the man right there that we could see. He's the guy who created all of this. Brett, how are you? Good to see you. I'm, I'm doing well, very well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. That's an amazing sound. And it's like rock and roll really never dies, does it? I, no, it can't, you know, it's impossible, I think. Yeah, I, I'm, and we're definitely here to keep it alive. And uh, I've been listening and inspired by that, those names you've been talking about. And, and I'm just honored that you're even saying them, that we sound like that. Well, since I was like 14, so. Uh, to sound like those classic rock and roll bands and to keep that sound alive is so important to uh, me, us, and, and Helen's, you know? So when you write Like a Fool in Love, tell me how that came to be. Well, Fool in Love was actually a cover by Frankie Miller, which we were in the oh, studio. Oh, really? Like, wow. I know, it's really crazy. In 1975 cover, it was a hit, uh, over, like, 23 on the top uh, billboard or whatever, but it never reached number one. And we, uh, I was in the studio with Buck, and, and all the guys, Rich and Tommy, and, and we were all like, what's a song that was supposed to be a hit that wasn't a hit yet? And we can do it. I was like, I don't know, what is that? And then we were like going through all kinds of different things. We were thinking about some Stones covers, some Aris covers maybe. But he was like, why don't we take a soul song and make it like a rock song? So if you listen to the original, A Fool in Love by Frankie Miller, you'll, see, you'll hear the soul, very soul, deep soul influence. And so we just kept put our little rock, you know, twist on it. And it kind of turned out to be this fun, dancey rock song. And, and it came out so well. And I was privileged to sing it. And he's such a good singer, Frankie is. And he's got so many yeah. good songs. So, um, but that's really how it came about. We were, we were in a groove at that point in the studio. So it was really easy just to, uh, you know, when something hit really well, Oh, let's go in and do it. And we did. You know, I, I've, t I've spoken to a lot of rock and roll stars, music, musicians, and and singers and and when they get a hit and then 15 20 years later somebody uh, covers it uh almost without exception maybe paul mccartney is the only exception who doesn't always like the covers that people do yeah, right. <laughs> but al almost without exception the, the the original artist who who created that says wow i love their take on it it's just so it's so fresh it's so cool and and i'm glad that they they honor me by doing that yeah, I know. With uh, with Frankie's camp, we kind of just did it, and and he was cool with it, and uh, we didn't really hear anything from him. You know, he's he's passed by now, but um, it was uh, just an honor to, to be able to get something that we really we grabbed a hold of, and 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 yeah, with Paul McCartney, I would just say he does it so good the first time, so it's like hard. To, yeah, <laughs> like beware, don't don't yeah, try. No, yeah. no. <laughs> Tell me the other thing that you did that I found interesting was that uh, you know. It, it, when you when you take your your artistry and your work and you tour around the country, you find places that are kind of magical, and you found that in El Paso. Tell me how that happened. Oh man, we did really did find it in El Paso. Well, it was during like a, a 2021, really, and the shutdown uh, that we had with the pandemic. And uh, this is one of the reasons I got to work with all these guys because they're always on tour. There's always touring with the biggest bands in the world, Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, Smith, Alice Cooper. And, uh, but it, I was uh, in talks with David Davidian, who's Alice Cooper's tour manager. Yeah. And he, at that time was like, Brett, do you want to go and do a record? These guys are all available right now. I have this group I really want to put around. And I, when he started mentioning the names, I'm like, are you kidding? Oh my goodness, if they're interested, of course. And they were, and then we needed a place to go that it was kind of secluded and where we could get to know each other and we lived basically in El Paso for two weeks together as a group. And, and you know, we ate together, we we drank wine together, we did all the kind of stuff. I heard so many rock and roll stories, it's ridiculous. That's the <laughs> coolest of all time. When you have Billy Sheen around and it's, you know, travel with David Lee Roth and, oh my goodness, and, and Kenny with uh, John Mellencamp, you know, it was just crazy. So we, we kind of uh, went to this ranch just because it was a, a place to go that you could live and work and get, close and, and really get something together and bond together very quickly in a, a short amount of time. And we did, and it was about a week and a half. We got a lot of tracks out of it. And it was just an incredible experience. I have to say, you know, one of the things that strikes me uh, was that when, when you, and you're mentioning all these, all these musicians and a lot of them are touring musicians or session musicians, they really know their craft. They get it quickly. They work hard. The, they don't, don't let up until the product's finished yeah. and, and, uh, and get, you're right. Getting them together is, really magical it's really it's a really tough thing to do but it's almost like it's not work at all 
oh my goodness, it's not work with this because they love what they do. And then one, and it's same with me. I felt so intimidated going down there, to be honest, just because of the stature of those people and those names. But they're really just very normal people that just love what they do and their work ethic is just incredible. So when you go down there and it, same with me, I never found what I do as work. It's just what I love. And and you just sit there and, and you go at it and and you'll, you'll go as long as it takes to get the right thing. And and I found a group of guys uh, or, or people like that down in El Paso with those guys who, regardless of the names and everything, we were one in, yeah. in our love for the song and, and what we, we were doing. So when you walk into a place like I see the Viper Room sign behind you or, yeah, you know, no, you, you, you go in there, the whiskey, yeah. you know, you go to the Sunset yeah. Room, all those places like that are iconic and you walk in with a really hot band and you, and you play music, uh, I mean, is that that part of the fiber of who you are? Oh, well, absolutely. I grew up on the Sunset Strip. So when I was like 20, oh, 21, you did. Yeah, I went out to LA and I wanted to go out. I was supposed to go to school. I went to Berkeley for a little bit, but I dropped out really early because I was like, I'm not going to write any good songs here. I don't think <laughs> I need to go live life, you know? So I did. I lived it to the fullest. I went out on the Sunset Strip with my brother and that's where Hellings comes from is our, both of our last names. We thought, well, it's got hell in it. You know, it's kind of a cool last name, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, and it was, but we had this Southern rock vibe that we wanted to bring into the market. And we, we thought that, you know, LA would just be a perfect place to get that that big rock sound. And we did, and we played the Whiskey, the Roxy, when the Keep Club was there. And I'm actually going back to play the Viper Room. I was asked the headline in May, May 12th coming up. So I'm going to be back there again. And I love the Viper Room. It's like my second home. We were the house band there for for a while. So I was. Wow, in, were you really? Uh, yeah, in, in about uh, for about ten years. So KTLA was a really big thing that I would wake up to and was every day. <laughs> no kidding! So, wow, what a yeah, surprise to hear that. It's a, yeah, it's an honor to be on your show. So, but yeah, it was uh, it or or it was from the night before. I'm not really sure. Back in the <laughs> it all runs together. <laughs> exactly. It's La La Land. But um, yeah, it was really, it was a fun time. I learned so much about songwriting, what to do, what not to do. And then now I get to go back to LA whenever I kind of want and play. I, we just played the whiskey and I have a new band that I just put together of a really, really talented group uh, on top of the band that I just did with the studio album with, you know? Yeah. These guys are out touring and doing whatever. I got my little, uh, you know, little mini super group that I go out with and do my thing with. So I'm like, gotta keep cranking, gotta keep playing. That's great. So you've put a compilation of tunes together and you're going to eventually end up with an album. Tell me how that's going to come about. Have you have you got a name for it yet? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be called Borderline. It was one of the tracks that we did down there. And also it's kind of appropriate because we were created it on the borderline. We were literally in El Paso. So I remember Rich running the borderline almost every morning when we were down there. So. It was appropriate and it was kind of a breaking point for me in my life. And it was also a breaking point for the industry and no one was playing. And it was, a, it was an interesting time for everybody, but with some, we created something really beautiful out of it. So um, I think we're going to be releasing that later this year. But right now we just, uh, we released uh, Kill Me To Keep Loving You, which um, came out and has a music video. And we released that first. And then when we just released Fall In Love with all the documentary footage of us down in the studio creating. And then we're going to create, uh, you know, other music videos and, and release singles throughout the year. And then you'll get the full thing soon. And uh, and I can't wait to see you out on tour, which I think is going to be happening pretty soon. So, Well, I'll be looking for you on tour and see see where we actually connect in person, which would be oh. absolutely fantastic. Brett Hellings, thanks so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. I wish you continued success and fun. Rock thanks. on, man. It's fantastic. Oh, rock and roll forever, right? <laughs> All right. Thanks thank so much. All right. Thank you.